If you are anything like me, you've probably seen someone else's footage somewhere and been like, wow, how do they get that like super nice, filmy, dreamy kind of look? What we are talking about, as you know from the title, is halation and bloom. Now, firstly, halation and bloom are very different, often confused or assumed to be somewhat of the same thing. Bloom is basically where you get that nice like highlight blow off from anything highlighted in your frame. So it kind of has this like blurry, hazy look for any of the light sources in your footage. Halation is something very different and it's a red color cast that you get around the edges of some of your footage, which is basically like replicating uh, an old film style camera. You can achieve nice halation by using some sort of mist filter like this one. If you guys aren't aware of these, it just adds like a bit of a haze over your lens. The problem with these is that it means that the haze is baked into your footage. And if you want it or not, you can't decide if you want to get rid of it. It's in there. I do often use a very weak mist filter when I'm filming almost everything. Now, like I mentioned, Premiere doesn't actually offer a way to just do this. There's no effect that's halation or bloom, but there is a couple of easy little workarounds. Check this out. Once we're in Premiere, I have these three clips here. Note that these first two clips, I've picked clips that have artificial lighting. That's where you're gonna notice the bloom the most. Even in something like this, with this light or this light, you'll see it. And if you can see them right now, and if I turned on the bloom inhalation, you can see what it does to these lights behind me. The way we're gonna do this is by creating an adjustment layer. We can just click on this little icon, adjustment layer, hit enter, and we can drag it above. Let's say this clip, I think we're gonna get the, the most noticeable effect. Then basically we're gonna head on to our effects and we're gonna search for channel blur. And if our adjustment layer is selected, we can simply double click on it. You can see it adds it up here into our effects panel. And basically we only want the red for our halation. That's the way it works in the film. So we don't want any of this green, we don't want any of the blue, and this is just allowing us to separate those colors. So let's hit the red blurriness up to something like 50, and you can see that it affects our footage in like quite an interesting way. You can see it's got this little red outline on a lot of our footage. So it's a little bit too strong for my liking, and the way I like to work around this is by heading to our blend mode and hitting lighten. You can see it's created a quite Nice little look, it's subtle now. Let's just put this over these other clips so you guys can get another reference or example. So you can see around, let's separate our biker. See these little red lines around the arms and stuff here. You can see with and without it. It just adds that like red fringe, which is halation. And that's what we wanted to achieve with this. So. That looks pretty cool, I would say. And if we wanted to change how strong it was even further, we can change our opacity strength. So you could just take it down to something like 60, maybe make it a little weaker. Let's run this across all of our clips. The next thing that we're gonna do is one of my favorite things to do, and that is adding bloom. Now, we got this night shoot that I did in Vienna in Austria recently. I was walking around in the city, just filming a couple of cool shots for one of my other video projects. And all of these artificial lights that we have in the background here are gonna be a perfect demonstration of how we can use this bloom. All we wanna do, pretty simple, we want to replicate, duplicate our clip here, which you can do by holding Option and just dragging it up into the next layer. So we got two of the exact same clips here. Nothing fancy. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna add a luma key to our top clip because the luma key is pretty much gonna be a mask that isolates our highlights only because we want our bloom to affect the highlights only. That's how bloom generally works. So the next thing we're gonna do, back to our effects panel, and we're gonna go luma key. We can double click it, making sure it's applied to the top clip, not the bottom, otherwise none of this will work. And then what we wanna kind of do is if we turn off our bottom layer, it will actually show us what we have selected here. So this is just the intensity of how much you essentially masking 
with the luma key you can mess around with it and see where's kind of nice i think i'm gonna put it somewhere around 80 and we can put our cut off we don't want to include too much but we don't want to include nothing i think somewhere around there is going to be good now we've essentially just isolated or masked our highlights and the next thing that we want to do is add a gaussian blur so we can head back to our panel top clip is selected double click gaussian blur you can also just drag any of these effects onto your clip same same and then what we want to do is we can hit our blurriness up to something like 80. we can turn back on our bottom clip so that we can see what's going on here nicely. Make sure that repeat edge pixels is selected. Any of these parameters, you guys need to play around with on your own and see what works best with the clip that you have at hand. For me and this clip, generally I keep it around these kind of parameters. So check the before and after with this now. If we turn off our top layer, you can see that all the highlights and everything are a lot sharper. They don't have that like blowout, like kind of fade glow effect. Does a really good job. You can see by turning on and off. Pretty cool. I would suggest that you guys color grade any of your footage before you actually do this. The footage that I'm working with right now, very flat, it's log and it hasn't been color graded or anything. So color grade your footage first, get it to a nice point that you're happy with and then you can add on your effects like these. I can quickly show you just how these would look on these other clips. So if I took these two and I duplicated them on and I copied this clip, I can paste the attributes onto this clip as well, making sure that I have Luma Key and Gaussian Blur. And it's gonna do the same thing to these clips. So you can see that it's just blurring out all of our highlights and for this one it actually looks a little too intense you can especially see in the sky and everything because this is has so much more highlights to it i think it's going to just need to be turned down quite a lot so in that case we could take our blurriness down to something like 50. and we might want to play with the cutoff and the threshold just to deselect a bit of that sky you can see in this last one way too intense because it's too bright so again we would have to turn the blurriness down to something like 50 maybe even less let's try 35 and i would also go to our cutoff so i would turn off our bottom layer and i would take the threshold up 100 and get our cutoff around there that is gonna look better. And for fun's sake, I'm just gonna quickly throw a color grade on here. A correction LUT, being a gamma compensation LUT to take it back to Rec 709 from Log. And it also has a styled color grade using one of my LUTs that you guys can actually find down below if you want, if you're interested in them. The other thing I would like to mention is that there's a few extra steps that you can do to this footage to really sell the effect. And one of those steps is adding grain or other overlays. In my retro asset pack, there will also be links in the description, I have a whole bunch of different grain overlays that you guys can add and tweak, and they're super nice and realistic looking, as well as like countless other cool retro stuff, fonts, sound effects, uh, light leaks, film burns, film frames, film gates, there's a bunch of stuff in there. Check it out, it's in the description. So I hope that was helpful for you guys and I cleared some things up about the difference between halation and blur as well as how you guys can achieve them in Premiere. It's not something that I knew of for that long now. This is a recent discovery for me as well. Other than that, have fun and goodbye.